by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله Viewers of Mother Channel, welcome to Arise and Shine. Yes, it's the early morning program only on Madhani Channel. But as you know, before we begin, today we listen to some verses of the Quran. But also before that, we give you a blessing of reciting Durud Park upon the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Viewers of Madhani Channel, it said that undoubtedly the person who will achieve salvation on the day of judgment and he will be safe from the terrors on the day of of judgment will be the person who sends the Rudai Park upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in abundance in this world. Allahu Akbar. Viewers of the channel, I think I've said this before, but the pious predecessors have said to us that a person that is classed as being in abundance, I doing something in abundance, I sending the Park in abundance, is the person that makes a habit of reciting the Rudai Park 313 times a day. Amir al advises us that on a daily basis, make a habit of reciting 313 times times through the park. It seems like a lot, it seems like a lot, but if you were to break it down into a hundred and get a tasbih of a hundred or you get a small tasbih of thirty and you know within a short space of time you've done it within minutes and in our lives we waste a lot of time viewers of the channel and Muslims should never waste any time and who knows that one extra through the park that you recite today might make all the difference on the day of Jajum. Viewers of the channel, before I introduce the topic of the day, insha'Allah, we're going to listen to some verses of the Holy Quran, insha'Allah. Let's listen to some verses of the Quran. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Main Allah ta'ala ki panah mein aata hoon, shaytan-e mardood se. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. اللہ کے نام سے شروع جو نہایت مہربان رحم والا وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَن نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَ اللَّهَ جَهْرَةً فَأَخَذَتْكُمُ الصَّاعِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ ثُمَّ بَعْثْنَاكُمْ مِنْ اور جب تم نے کہا اے موسیٰ ہم ہرگز تمہارا یقین نہ لائیں گے جب تک علانیاں خدا کو نہ دیکھ لیں تو تمہیں کڑک نے آ لیا اور تم دیکھ رہے تھے پھر مرے پیچھے ہم نے تمہیں زندہ کیا کہ کہیں تم احسان مانو وَظَلَّلَّ عَلَيْكُمُ الْغَمَامَ وَأَنزَلَّ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى كُلُوا مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقُنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ اور ہم نے عبر کو تمہارا سائبان کیا اور تم پر من اور سلوہ اتارا کھاؤ ہماری دی ہوئی ستری چیزیں اور انہوں نے کچھ ہمارا نہ بگاڑا ہاں اپنی ہی جانوں کا بگاڑ کرتے تھے وَإِن قُلْ لَدْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقُرْيَةَ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدًا وَدْخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ نَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاكُمْ وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ اور جب ہم نے فرمایا اس بستی میں جاؤ پھر اس میں جہاں چاہو بے روک ٹوک کھاؤ اور دروازہ میں سجدہ کرتے داخل ہو اور کہو ہمارے گناہ معاف ہوں ہم تمہاری خطائیں بخش دیں گے اور قریب ہے کہ نیکی والوں کو اور زیادہ دیں صدق اللہ العظیم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایوی ایز امد چانل 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 
some verses of the Holy Quran. Allah Akbar. And I pray that every household, every Muslim household, uh, well, I believe, I have this hope and I have this belief that every Muslim household has a copy of the Quran in the house. But one area where I, I am maybe slightly worried is that I don't believe every household reads the Quran. And I pray to Allah Azza wa that every household reads the Quran on a daily basis or listens to some verses of the Holy Quran on a daily basis. Insha'Allah Azza wa Viewers of the channel, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about those people who after the Prophet of Allah Azza wa after the Prophets, they were the greatest people that ever walked on this earth. And who else are we talking? We're talking about the companions, the Sahaba of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these people, they were the greatest people after the Prophets that ever walked on this earth. And what is the definition of a Sahaba? Again, you know when you grow up as a child, and Alhamdulillah, this is one of the blessings of Dawud Islam, that those things that people think everybody knows, but unfortunately because of being embarrassed, nobody's afraid to ask, everybody's afraid to ask these questions, who is this, who is that? Because they think, oh, it's such a simple question, I should know the answer to this. People are afraid to ask these questions. And Alhamdulillah, on this platform of Dawud Islam, be it on Madani channel or be it on the Madani Kaflas, we go back to the basics, explain the basics so everybody knows what the basics are. What is a Sahaba? What is a Sahaba? Allahu Akbar. Alama Hafiz ibn Hajar Asqalani Ramtullah Ta'ala stated, he's defined it. He said, those fortunate individuals who saw the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with their own eyes in the state of Iman and also passed away in the state of Iman are called the Sahabi, i.e. the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So to be a companion, because there may have been people that saw the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they were not blessed with Iman. So they are not classed as a Habi. Those are the Sahabi who saw the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar. They saw him with their own eyes. They had Iman in their hearts and they passed away with Iman as well. How many of these companions are there, viewers of the channel? There are more than 100,000 companions, more than 100,000 companions. It is narrated that approximately 114,000 companions gathered in Makkah al Mukarramah on the occasion of Hajjat al Vida with the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from some other narrations, it is stated that there was 124,000 companions. Allahu Akbar. Who are these people? Who are these great personalities? What is the status of these? Insha'Allah Azawajal will try and learn some of that today and we'll learn how they live their lives. Not only that, the sacrifices, yes, views of the channel, the sacrifices that these people were willing to make to spread the deen of Islam so that the deen of Islam is with us today. And remember this, views of the channel, if it was not for the sacrifices that were made by the companions, the tabi, the tabi, tabi'in, the pious predecessors, all those people that worked for the deen tirelessly throughout their lives, then the deen would not have come to us. And so as a result of that, surely we owe it to next generations to pass on this message. But before we continue, viewers of the channel, listen to the daily kalam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mujhe kya manga 
क्या क्या भूल गया बाकी ना रहा फिर होश मुझे क्या मांगा क्या क्या भूल गया काबे पे पड़ी जब पहली नजर क्या चीज है दुनिया भूल गया काबे पे पड़ी जब पहली नजर सास के पर्दे लहराए ईमा की हरारत तेज हुई एहसास के पर्दे लहराए ईमा की हरारत तेज सजदों की तड़प अल्लाह सर अपना सौदा भूल गया सजदों की तड़प अल्लाह सर अपना सौदा क्या चीज है दुनिया भूल गया काबे पे पड़ी जब पहली नजर जिस वक्त दुआ को हाथ उठे याद आना सका जो सोचा था जिस वक्त दुआ को हाथ उठे याद आना सका जो सोचा था इस हारे अकीदत की धुन में इस हारे तमन्ना हारे अकीदत की धुन में इस हारे तमन्ना भूल गया काबे पे पड़ी जब पहली नजर क्या चीज है दुनिया जब पहली नजर हर वक्त बरसती है रहमत काबे पे जमील हर वक्त बरसती है रहमत काबे पे जमील
Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are talking, uh, views of the channel, about Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam. And I'm just going to relate to you a story of something that actually happened uh, regarding the love and the respect that the companions had for each other as well. It's narrated that Sayyidina Abu Jahim radiallahu ta'ala states that on one particular day, numerous companions, either Sahaba, were attacked and terribly wounded by non-believers. Amongst the wounded, I was looking for my paternal cousin. I had a water in a bowl and was enough to quench the thirst of one person. I thought that if he has some remaining breasts left, then I would give him this water to him and would clean his face with this water. When I reached near him, I saw that he was drenched in blood. I asked him, shall I give you the water? Through her gesture, he said, yes. In the meanwhile, someone's groaning voice was heard. And my cousin said, take this water to him. I saw that he was the brother of Sayyidina Amr bin As, Sayyidina Hisham bin As radiallahu ta'ala. I reached him and I said, here, let me give you water. In the meanwhile, he too heard an injured person groaning. Through Gesha, he said, take this water to him. When I reached him, he had passed away. Then I came back to Sayyidina Hisham bin As radiallahu ta'ala. But he too had passed away. Then I came back to my cousin and saw that he too had passed away. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. What great eminence and dignity, views of the channel, that the companions possessed. Despite being in a state of dying, despite being in a state that obviously at that moment where you're passing away, you, are, you, know, you say that you're so thirsty that they say people can drink the oceans, but the thirst will not be quenched. But even at that time, even at that time, they sacrifice themselves sacrifice themselves for others and this is a great status of them that they would sacrifice whatever they had for the status of the other muslims and for the status of islam so this is the great status of the companions and it's through those sacrifices that we we say we make sacrifices people will say oh this person you know this mubalik of Islam, he's making a sacrifice that's making a sacrifice views of the channel, the sacrifices we are, or some people are making, or some people claim to make, or some people think people are making, is nothing, is nothing in comparison to the sacrifices that the companions made. And you know, sometimes views of the channel, when you hear the stories of the sacrifices that they made, the things that they did during their life, the thought, what thought, I tell you what thought needs to come to your mind. The thought that needs to come to your mind is number one, they were human beings. They were not a a unique creation in the sense they were not a different creation they were human beings like me and you they had stomachs they had bodies they had wants they had needs they had families they had children they had all those things that distract us you know nowadays the dunya distracts us we are distracted by the want for more food we are distracted by our family we're distracted by making more we're distracted by sorting out the house by sorting out the car by doing this we have these distractions do you not think that they had them distractions were not in front of them as well. Yes, they had it all. Of course they had all. Everything was in front of them. They had stomachs, they had lives, they had wives, they had children, they had houses. They had all of these things that we have as well. But, but in the priority on the first line that they put before everything else, and maybe the first chapter before anything else came, was the deen of Islam and the love of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And when you hear about how they lived their lives and the sacrifices that they made, Without do it, viewers of the channel, they were the greatest amongst the creation after the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given them a great status as well. And amongst the companions, viewers of the channel, the four righteous Khalifas are the greatest. Namely, Sayyidina Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Hazrat Umar Farooq Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Hazrat Usman Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Sayyidina Ali Radiallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These four who became the Khalifas after the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are the greatest companions amongst the companions but I want to pause here for a second viewers of my channel if I was to ask and we've said we've said this that the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the prophets they were great they were the greatest people on this earth do we know the names of them if I was to ask you to mention the names of the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how many could you mention if I was to ask you to mention the Ashra Mubashra, first of all, you would say, what is the Ashra Mubashra? You know, I don't even know what the Ashra Mubashra is. Views of Mother Channel, the Ashra Mubashra are those 10 companions that were guaranteed paradise. 
the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in his apparent dunya whilst he was here amongst us before he put a curtain between this world and the next world, he stated that these ten people are guaranteed paradise. Who are they? Do we know who they are? Can we name ten companions? Okay, let's make it easier. Can we name ten prophets? Probably we can't. But if I was to ask you another question now, name me ten cricket players. How many could you name? Name me ten politicians. How many could you name? Name me ten film stars, ten actors, ten influential people, ten businessmen. How many could you name? Ten, if I was to say the ten former prime ministers of your country, name me ten prime ministers from your country, from the history of your country. How many could you name? You could probably name quite a few. But when I say to you, to name ten companions, when I say to you name the Ashraf of Ashraf, when I say to you name ten prophets, all of a sudden we go quiet. Why is this? It's because we as a Muslim we're given very little importance to the deen. We've given very little importance to the knowledge of the deen. We know so much about the dunya. You know, if, if I was to sit down with someone and say, okay, how do I, you know, I'm not working at the moment here in the UK, the, there's a state, the government state provides benefits for people and, you know, that are not working and everything. If you were to say, okay, I'm not working now, what do I do? And someone would sit down and say, well, if you fill in this form, it's like the P32 and you fill in that form, the, you get that, you'll be able to get this benefit, child benefit, income support benefit, workers seeking allowance, da da da. And we'd name all of these things that we'd be able to do. But ask us the faraiz of ghusl. You know, I've even, I've even seen people when you ask them how many namaz are in the day, and unfortunately they don't know that. <laughs> I remember asking people, uh, viewers of the channel, I, I don't even know whether I should say this, asking people that, do you know, tell me, tell me where the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was born. And people have said to oh yeah, I know where he was born. Okay, where was he born? He was born in Karachi. That was the answer I was given. That's how little knowledge we have, viewers of Madhya Nabat al -Din. And yet these great people, these great companions who sacrifice their lives, sacrifice their lives, and not only said it, they did it. You know, we say, we'll say, yeah, we're, we're willing to make big sacrifices for the deen. We'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll do all these things. But when it comes to it, what do we really do? You know, it, they say that when it comes to the crunch, yeah, how many people are standing in the line or how many people back off? When it comes to the time to give sacrifice, to give time, and nowadays, nowadays viewers of my channel, here where I am in the UK, we're not asking you to sacrifice your lives. We're not asking you to go into the battlefield with the knowledge that you may never come home again. We're not asking you to do that. We're not asking you to say, uh, give salam to your family, say, say Allah is to your family, say whatever you want to say to the family, and leave your home with the thought that you may never come back. We're not saying that. All we're saying is leave for three days. Leave for seven days, leave for 12 days, leave for 30 days, and travel in the way of Allah Azawajal. Oof, and how hard is that? Allah, how hard is that? How hard is that? Just think to yourself, viewers of my channel, if the companions had the same mindset that we've got, where would we be today? You know? If the, when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded them to go, they didn't look, they didn't think, they didn't ask, how long, when, when will I be, get back? How my family going to survive? What are they going to do? Who's going to pay my bills? They didn't ask these questions. Labbaik. And they went. They left. They left their homes. And they spread the deen of Islam. Through the sacrifices that they made. And unfortunately today, we cannot make these sacrifices. We cannot make these sacrifices. And again, we need to ask ourselves why. Why? Why is it that we're not willing to travel in the way of Allah Azawajal? Why is it that we're not willing to give this time? And it's because we've become so engrossed in dunya that we've been... You know they say that the mind gets befogged. You know they say that when people drink alcohol or drink any intoxication, it befogs the mind. It puts like a, a fog in front of the mind and the mind can't think straight, the mind can't think straight. And this dunya... You know people get intoxicated with alcohol, people get intoxicated with drugs. We've been intoxicated with this dunya. And this dunya is like taken over our mind and we can't see the reality now. All we can see is pound signs, dollar signs, rupees, and an. That's all we can see. We can't see our reality. And that's all we can see. And we're struggling after that, struggling after that, going after this, and forgetting where we are. Walking in the middle of the night, 
not seeing where we are going. Allahu Akbar. Back to the companions views of Mother Channel. Back to the status of the companions. We cannot even think of the dignity. We cannot even, I cannot, you know, today I'm going to try and talk to you about the companions, but I cannot give you the status. I cannot give you the credit of the status that the companions have. If I was to talk all day, if I was to talk all year, if I was to do silsilas and silsilas on it, programs on it, I could not explain to you or give credit to the status that they have given. Allah Azza wa Jalla is the only one that can give them the status that they are due. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah Tawbah, ayat number 100, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Allah is pleased with them. And they are pleased with him. Allah Akbar. And he has kept ready for them gardens beneath which rivers flow to abide in it forever and ever. Only this is the great success. In another ayat of the Quran, Allah Azza wa says, They are hopeful of Allah's mercy. And Allah is most forgiving and ever forgiven. Allah Akbar. Viewers of Mother Channel, this is just the status of the companions of the Prophet of Allah And we'll talk a little bit more about it, inshallah. So we like it this time normally every day. We have the daily reminder. We're going to go to the daily reminder now. But whilst we're going, whilst we're going to the daily reminder, viewers of Mother Channel, I want you to reflect. I want you to reflect and think to yourself that what sacrifices they made. And I want to leave you with this. That as I mentioned earlier on, there were 114,000 or in one narration, 124,000 that listened to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Hajjat al -Idha. And in that final khutbah that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, made, he told, he made a lot of instructions to us. And amongst the instructions were to read our namaz, to fast in the month of Ramadan, to pay the zakat to you and to perform the hajj if we are to. And these were orders used in the channel. Remember this, these were orders from the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those people that say yes, we listen to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever you say, remember these orders that he gave. But he also said, that spread this message. And he said that companions, they left. They left the city of Medina to spread the deen of Islam. And today, we see the mazars of companions are all around the world. Because they listened to this command and they went and spread the deen of Islam. And you know, whenever I hear this views of Mother Channel, a thought comes to my mind. Imagine views of Mother Channel. Imagine those lucky companions, how fortunate they were, how blessed they were. They were there. They were able to see the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi with their own eyes. They were able to read the namaz behind the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were able to get direct guidance from him. Listen to him, see him, sit with him. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. How fortunate they were. But at the same time, they left Medina. They left Medina. Imagine, imagine, imagine viewers of Mother Channel being in that position where you can see the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in front of you. Spend time with him. And then you leave. You know, obviously, why are you leaving? You're leaving your beloved, you're leaving the one that you love the most. Why? Because they understood the importance, viewers of Mother Channel, of the command of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they understood that the, the love of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just sitting there. The love of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just sitting at our homes, doing nothing, sitting at our homes, watching TV. The love of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just making our bank balances bigger. The love of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is getting up, leaving your homes and spreading the deen of Islam. And that's what these companions did. They left our city of Medina. And like I said, it is said that 124,000 companions on Hajjad al approximately 10,000 companions are buried in the city of Medina. Allahu Akbar. Where are all the others? They spread the deen of Islam. And that is the sacrifices that they made. And when you hear about their lives, you need to think to yourselves, what sacrifices are we making? They went all around the world. And there's, there's, there's a mazars of the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say as far as China, Russia, Pakistan, India, Iran, Persia, Istanbul, all around these places. Wherever you go now, people go visiting places. People go on holidays now to visit places. These same places that you go on holiday now, the companions of the Prophet of Allah went there to spread Islam. 
And now, when we ask you to travel on Amudri Kafla and we say, let's go to Ireland, let's go to Scotland, let's go to Wales, let's go to Europe, when we go there, what happens with you, Channel? We welcome with open arms. We welcome with open arms, and people take us into the masjid and welcome us and are very happy to see us. When these people left, they left literally in the dark. They left in the dark that they did not know where they were going. I remember someone, views on the channel, that some years ago, somebody wanted to go and study in Karachi in Pakistan. And alhamdulillah, we were actually talking about this just before the program, that the situation in Karachi is, is, is a very good situation at the moment. But there was a time where Karachi was quite uh, a scary place, so to speak, and very people, a lot of people were scared there. And somebody wanted to go and study Darsan Azami, uh, the scholarly course to become an alim in Pakistan. And the parents were a little bit scared, they're a little bit worried about the situation. And they said to her, it was actually the daughter that they said it to, they said to the daughter that, look, you know, the situation there, you, you know, the situation's not good, and the situation's like this, and are you sure? And the daughter taught their parents a beautiful lesson. The daughter said to her parents, the Abajan, when the companions of the Prophet of Allah left Medina to spread the deen of Islam, did they have Google? Did they have these with them so they could check what the situation was like there, what the temperature was like there, what the facilities were like there, how much it cost to live there? They didn't have that. They left for the pleasure of Allah Azza And she said, if, she said, if, whilst I'm traveling in the way of Allah Azza I'm trying to acquire the knowledge of the deen, that if anything happens to me, if anything happens to me, will I not die as a shaheed? Will I not die as a martyr? And the parents thought to themselves that their daughter has taught them a lesson today. That the companions made these sacrifices without knowledge. They didn't know where they were going, who they were going to see, what was going to happen to them. And they left to sacrifice their lives, not knowing when they will come back, not knowing what they will see, not knowing where they will sleep, not knowing what they were going to eat or anything. Allahu Akbar, to spread the deen of Islam. Views of the channel is something for us to reflect upon today. But in the meanwhile, viewers of the channel, you're watching Rise and Shine. We have the daily reminder. Let's go and listen to the reminder of the day. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. My viewers of Mundi Channel, what we have to look at is we feed our body with food. We hydrate our body with water. That is our body. What do we feed our soul with? What do we feed our soul with? If we do not read namaz, if we do not pay zakat, if we do not keep fast in Ramadan, if we do not do hajj, if we can afford it, then we are not feeding our soul. Salah is a thing that helps to feed your soul. But also, the zikr of Allah helps to feed your soul. Your soul becomes strong. Your qalb becomes strong. My viewers of Madni Channel, we need not just to feed our bellies. We need to feed our soul with the zikr of Allah, the zikr of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Also, we need to read our salah. We need to read extra nuafil. We need to read our sunnahs. We need to do the deen work, meaning neki ki dawat. We need to sit down and watch pious people. We need to be watching Madni channel because that is the only channel that does not have advertisements or women on its channel. My sweet viewers of Madni channel, it is really, really imperative that we feed our souls. And firstly, the way you're going to feed your soul or the way we are going to feed our soul is by reading our salah. Because remember, the first pillar of Islam is your shahada. Your second pillar is Salah. We cannot lay bricks, then leave one empty space and then put bricks on the foundation. The foundation has to be strong. 
your second pillar of Islam is Salah. We need to read our Salah. We need to read our Salah. Do zikr of Rasulullah sallallahu Do zikr of Allah azza wa jal. And inshaAllah azza wa jal. When these things are on your tongue, your du'as will be accepted. Inshaallah azza wa jal. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of Madhi Channel, you're watching Arise and China. We just had a daily reminder there about praying our salah. And you know, loads of things come to your mind whilst I was listening to that. Question one, do we ever think that it was possible for the Sahaba to miss their salah? Impossible, impossible. And you know, when the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and we talked about Hajjat al Vida, and in that he told the Muslims that were there that pray your salah, Fast in the month of Ramadan, pay the zakat that is due upon you, and perform the hajj if it is fast upon you. These were commands. These were commands, and for the Muslims, the pious predecessors, it wasn't a question of should we or shouldn't we. It wasn't a question of have I got time to read my namaz or not. It was like that is my thing that I have to do, and their lives would revolve around that namaz. And just a little story I want to share with you. I think I may have mentioned it to you before that I remember there was a person, he was not a Muslim and he'd become a Muslim, alhamdulillah. And he was a person that used to work from home and he used to live in, in a very small community. And there were no real, not many Muslims around there. So he wasn't in a huge Muslim community where there were a lot of masjids, etc. And I was fortunate that I met him. And he'd been a Muslim maybe, maybe a year now, maybe, maybe a year or something, maybe less, maybe more, I'm not exactly sure. And we were talking, we were sitting there, and I was saying, how are you going, and you know, how was your month of Ramadan? Because it was his first Ramadan, and he was saying that, Alhamdulillah, he enjoyed it. And he asked me a question. And he said to me, I'm going to ask you a question, but I want you to give me the answer, no. And I thought to him that, you know, you're gonna, I said to him, you're going to ask me a question, you already want me to tell you the answer, why not just say no in the first place? Yeah, because that's what the answer that you want. He said, no, no, I want to ask you the question. I want to ask you, I want to ask you the question, and I'm hoping, and I'm praying that you say, no, this is not true. I said, okay, ask the question. He said, I have heard, I don't believe it, he said. And so, you know, he was like kind of embarrassed to ask the question. He thought I would get angry at him for asking the question. He thought I would get angry at him for actually asking this question, to have the audacity to ask this question. He was actually embarrassed in asking this question. He said, I've heard that there are some Muslims who don't read the namaz. Is this true? And you know, I was like, I didn't know what to say. And he asked the question and like for for a few moments, I was like, what do I say to him? And I just put my head down, because I couldn't think of anything to say. And he went, no, 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 it's not possible. I couldn't say anything. What, what can I say to that? What can you say to you? If someone says to you that, I believe there are some Muslims who don't read the namaz, and he asks it in such a way that for him it's a shock. And he said, then he said himself, how is it possible how is it possible, brother, for someone to call themselves a Muslim and not read the namaz? How is it possible? I cannot understand this, that people say they are Muslims and don't read the namaz. Views of Mother Channel. Tell me, what answer do I give him? What answer can I give him? And even, even to this day, I've not come up with a, a good answer in my mind that I could phone him and call him up and say, this is the answer. This is why Muslims are not reading the namaz. Why are we not reading the namaz? There are many, many reasons that we could give. But ultimately, ultimately, it is our own weakness of our iman that we're not reading our namaz. And as we heard in the daily reminder that it is something that we need to feed the soul. We're busy running around all day. First thing in the morning, yeah, the wife may say to you, okay, what should we cook tonight? 
Should we make meat tonight? Should we make fish tonight? Should we make vegetables tonight? Should we make lentils tonight? What should we eat tonight? What should we eat at lunch? These are the questions that are asked in every household. Do we ask? So what time are you going to read your Zohar? What time are you going to read your Asr? Maghrib, we're going to make sure that we don't read, we read Maghrib on time, we're going to read Isha. And we plan our days around that. Or is it just secondary that if it fits in, it fits in, if it doesn't fit in, never mind, forget about it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And you know, we're told that the Shaheed, Allah Azza wa Jalla says that the people that are martyrs, they're alive, they're alive, do not say they are dead. And all those martyrs that passed away, if they could see us now, looking at us, what would they think? These people, these people that we sacrificed our lives for, these people that we sacrificed our family for, these people that we sacrificed our children for, aren't strong enough to list that quilt in the morning and get out and perform the Salatul Fajr. Is that how low we become views of money channel? That we can't even read namaz five times a day. We can't find the time, we're so busy, we're so busy that we can't find our time to read namaz. You people say this, oh I'm busy, I'm busy, I haven't got time, I haven't got time. But you know what happens when a calamity befalls them? When someone in your household becomes ill or sick or has to go to a hospital, yeah, for an operation, you don't say, oh I haven't got time to take you, you go yourself, get a taxi, get a bus. No, you find time. When someone's dying, you say, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't got time, I've got to do this. You find time. Even if the effect that someone passes away in a different city, a different town, and you have to go there for three days, four days, you find time. People have passed away in different countries. You hear people here that their relatives have passed away in Pakistan or India. What happens is they get on the plane, they go there for three weeks, four weeks, and they'll stay there for 40 days until the Chalizva happens, the Khatams happen, everything, they'll stay there for 40 days. They found 40 days to go there. They can't find 10 minutes to read the namaz. A friend invites us for a meal, we find time. We never say, sorry, I haven't got time. But when it comes to our namaz, we've never got time. Again, viewers of Mother Channel, it's our priorities. The whole, your whole life, viewers of Mother Channel, is all about your priority. What is your priority in life? What do you want to achieve in your life? And if your priority is to live your life as a Muslim, then live your life as a Muslim. Don't just talk like a Muslim, don't just look like a Muslim, act like a Muslim. Live like a Muslim. A Muslim is not just he that holds the tasbih in his hand and is doing zikr. You need to practically read your namaz five times a day if you use a money channel. Read your namaz five times a day. And if we learn anything, if we learn anything from any of our pious predecessors, that they all were steadfast on reading the namaz. They all had different qualities, they all had different attributes, they all lived their lives differently, they all did different things, but one thing that they all did was they all read the namaz five times a day. Well, all of them read the namaz five times a day. And if in the rare occasion, in the few occasions that maybe we have read about that, if anybody for whatever reason missed, missed the namaz, for them it was like they passed away that someone had happened. I've heard it said that you know when people, if a, in the, there was a time where if, people did, if a certain person did not turn up for Fajr at the masjid, people would go to the house and think that he passed away. Look, think to yourself. You know when it comes to the day of Eid, on the day of Eid the masjids are full. Two hours later, it's as if the whole Muslim community has emigrated. You know like, I, I imagine you know that, you know when people go on Hajj, and the city of Makkah, the city of Medina gets overflowing with people, millions and millions of people are there. And then literally, they start to disappear. But imagine if they all disappeared overnight, yeah, all the people that, that people have come on a Hajj, they disappeared overnight. Sometimes, it makes me think that, you know, uh, the namaz at Eid, yeah, the masjid is full. Yeah, and they're struggling to cram people in and you're leading your namaz like this, shoulder to shoulder. And yet at Asr, it's as if we've all left town. Everybody's gone. Everybody's left the city and gone. You know, because there's nobody there. A Zohar for Eid, especially on, on Eid, a Zohar, how many people there? A Zohar, a few people are there. And again, it's our older generation that are in the masjids. Our older generation that are there at Fajr in the masjids. Why? Because the young ones aren't strong enough. The young ones aren't strong enough to lift that blanket up and go and read the namaz. Allahu Akbar. 
Viewers of the channel coming back to talking about the companions of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Sahaba. Once again, I apologize for going away from the topic. Zat Umar Farooq radiyallahu taala has narrated that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Revere my companions, as they are the most pious people amongst you all. They are the most pious people amongst you all. So we should revere them. We should respect them." And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also stated that they are best amongst my ummah, the best. The best amongst my ummah are those who are from my era, I, the blessed companions, and the ones after them, and then the ones after them, I, the tabi'in, and the tabi tabi'in. There are such views of my channel, just remarkable companions and blessed companions who, through the love, the respect, the sacrifices that they made, that the the love that they created in the heart of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi loved them so much and he mentioned them he took their names the names of Sayyidina Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala is the most soft and kind hearted person Sayyidina Hazrat Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala is the most uh, just in my ummah he mentions Sayyidina Usman as the most modest in my ummah he mentions Sayyidina Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala as the wisest and bravest in my ummah he mentions Sayyidina Abdullah bin Masood radiyallahu ta'ala as the most pious and trustworthy person in my ummah. He remembers, he mentions Sayyidina Abu Zar as the most ascetic eye, the one who's turned away from this world and the truthful person in his ummah. And this is the status that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu has given himself to the companions. And he further states, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu further states with regards to the status of the companions. He said that I, I, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu is the first one to enter paradise amongst the people of Arab. Sayyidina Hazrat Salman radiallahu ta'ala will be the first one to enter paradise amongst the people of Persia. Sayyidina Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala is the first one to enter paradise amongst the Romans. And Sayyidina Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala is the first one to enter paradise amongst the people of Abyssinia. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar viewers of Manichal. This is again just a glimpse and that's all I can give you today viewers of Manichal. I cannot, I cannot give the, the status or I cannot talk enough about the status of the companions, I cannot give credit to them. Whatever I say to them is not enough to give credit to the companions. But we can hear the words of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can hear the words of Allah Azza wa Jalla, what was said about them. And from that we need to understand the statuses. That the, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to mention the dignity and the glory of the blessed companions. There are four viewers of Madri Channel, and this is a very important lesson for all of us. We should all we should all truly love the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and spend our lives in following the seerat and the character of them because they are the bright stars of guidance. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, my companions, my companions are like the stars. Whoever amongst them you follow, Allahu Akbar, you will be guided. You will be guided. But again, what do we know about them? Have we, we mentioned the, the sirat, the life of the companions. How many sirats of the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi have you led, read? How many booklets, books have you read about the life, the sacrifices they made, the lives that they lived, the family that they had, the children that they had, the way they lived their lives? Do we know anything? Okay, let's take one step back. Sirat of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What do we know about him? How did he live his life? Where was he born? How did he spread the deen of Islam? What sacrifices did he make? What advice did he give to his companions? Do we know any of this? If we do, then marhaba, excellent. But if not, why not? Why, why do we not know about these things? As I said earlier on, people can mention football teams, yeah? Maybe they can mention all sorts of things, cricket teams, they can mention formations and they'll mention, you know, all these positions that if you're playing cricket, then if you're in this position, it's called this, and if you're in that position, it's called that, and I, whatever the positions they call them, yeah? They know all these things, but they don't know anything about the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's that beautiful person that will come to us and we will be asked, what did you know about this person? What did you say about this person? Don't know him. Don't know anything about him. Don't know who he is. Don't know where he came from. I don't know. Why are you asking me? Is that what we're going to say in that dark and lonely grave views of Mother Channel? Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. We need to learn about these. We need to know who 
the companions of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, has said that they are like the shining stars. You know, follow them and you will be guided. You know, the the people nowadays we have maps. Nowadays we have GPS systems. Now we have all these sort of things. The people of the past when they used to travel on ship, they used to travel following the stars. And the stars used to be the guidance, and they used to follow the stars and know which direction they're in. And they would follow the stars, and by as a result of following the stars, they would never get lost. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that the companions are your stars. Follow them, and you will never be misguided. With regards to the commentary of this hadith. Hakim al Ummuth Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi Ramutullah Taala stated, "What a beautiful comparison! The Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is revered to his blessed companions as the stars and the guidance." In another hadith, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam revered to the household of Ali Bath as the Ark of Hazrat Nuh Alayhi Salam, and he goes on to say, "Views of Malaysia, listen to this: A traveller of a sea is in need of a boat as well as the guidance of the ship." Of the stars, a ship sail in the sea only upon the guidance of the stars. In the same way, Allahu Akbar, the Muslim Ummah is the need of the Ali Bad Atar, as well as the blessed companions for the spiritual life. We need the ship of the Ali Bad, and we need the stars of the companion to get to our destination. And he goes on to say, the Muslim Ummah is in the need of the Ali Bad Atar, as well as the blessed companions for the spiritual life. Guidance for Ummah lies. In following the blessed companions, it is also stated the Ali Sunnah will safely will sail safely to the shore as the companions of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are the stars and the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The household is the Ark. Allahu Akbar. Views of Malaysia. So without love of the Ali Bad, without love and respect and guidance from the companions of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will never. Get to our destination. The viewers of Mother Channel, you're watching Rise and Shine. And again, we've digressed a little bit, and I do apologize. But we have a daily hadith, the hadith of the day. Let's go to the daily hadith of the day and see what we can learn today. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Rise and Shine, inshaAllah azawajal, in today's daily hadith, we will hear about a very important element of our lives. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu has reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, Ya'ti ala nasi zamanun. A time will come upon the people, la yubali al mar'u ma akhaza minhu when one will not care where he attains his wealth from, whether he attains it through permissible means or impermissible means, halal or haram. No doubt, one of the obligation upon a Muslim is that he earns for himself and his family a pure and halal sustenance. On one occasion, Rasulullah did not sleep all night. So Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha asked, O Messenger of Allah, what has caused you to stay awake all night? The best of mankind sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replied that I found a date last night and I ate it. Then I remembered that we had in our house some dates that were meant for charity. So I feared that the date I ate was from the dates that were to be given to charity. Subhanallah, what does this go to show? Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam ate one date, forgetting that he had some dates in his house that were meant for charity. And this caused them to have a sleepless night, just out of fear that this date may have been from the dates of the charity. So this accidental morsel caused our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much unrest and so much discomfort in reality this serves as a lesson for us. This is a teaching within this. There is a teaching for us, those of us who may be earning such a living that comes from a means of haram, and yet we enjoy a deep sleep at night. And like this, we have countless accounts of various Sahaba Ikram and Awliya uh, who too are great role models even in just safeguarding themselves from doubtful food and sustenance. 
Halal sustenance is the means of attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also His Azzawajal's protection. It's the means of getting all our lawful du'as answered and also and truly a means of being honored on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the pursuit of seeking halal sustenance easy upon all of us. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of Madhi channel, you're watching our eyes. And shine. And we just heard a little Madhi Pearls there with regards to halal sustenance. And again, is it something that we even consider? Is it something that we ever ponder? And uh, just, you know, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing, sitting here talking to you, I'm actually talking to myself here, viewers of the channel. That I remember that when I came into the environment of Dawud Islami, and the very first uh, piece of advice that I was given by the Mubalik that bought me, into the Mahal of Dawah Islam is that whenever you talk to someone, whenever you are trying to guide someone or whatever you're doing, just think that you're not talking to them. Think that you're talking to yourself. And so when I'm sitting here, viewers of Mahal, I'm asking myself questions. Do I really love the companions of the Prophet of Allah Do I really love the Ali Bayat? Do I really love the Prophet of Allah Do I give justice to what they deserve? Do I follow them in the way that they should be followed? Do I know enough about them? And without doubt, views of Malachi, no, I don't. I don't know enough about them. I don't know all about them, and I need to know more. And so, views of Malachi, all of us, we all need to know more. We all need to find out more about these things. These, these people that came as, as great guidance for us. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I may have read many, many seerats, but I've not read enough. I don't know everything about his life. I don't know everything about the companions' life. Yes, I've read some of the books. I've read some of the seerats of the companions, but I've not read all of them. I've not read all that are available. So I can never say that I know enough. And when we hear these reminders about our halal earnings, when we hear these reminders about reading our namaz, when we hear these reminders about paying our zakat, when we hear these reminders, then that's exactly what they should be, views of money channel. They should be literally, you know, we should literally be, you know, hitting ourselves and say, hold on a minute, where are you? And the pious predecessors said that they would hit themselves to remind themselves, to give themselves a wake-up call. You know, we, we set our alarms for going to work at a certain time. We set our alarms to make sure they're not late for work. Do we ever set our alarms to make sure that we don't miss our salah? You know that your, you, nowadays you can set multiple alarms on your phones. Your alarm, your phone should have at least five alarms set on it. Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, they should have at least five alarms set on it. Now your other alarms for getting up for work, for arriving at work, for whatever you have, yes. But do you ever do this? Unfortunately we don't, because we don't prioritize it. It's secondary, it's something that... Islam has become a hobby for certain people. It's something that you do when you've got time, and it's something that you don't do if you haven't got time. Yes, it's something I would like to do, if I get the time. Not something that we must do. And Islam is all about disciplining ourselves. And we know in this dunya that those people that discipline themselves, they are the fortunate ones, they are the successful ones. Whether they discipline themselves at work or at business that, you know, they say to him, oh yeah, he's built up a good bit. Why? Because he's given it time. He's built up that great business. Why? Because he gives that time. He gives that business time. He, he gives that business concentration. He put all his full efforts into that. And that's why he's become successful in the dunya. In the same way, viewers of the channel, if you want to become successful in the Akhirat, then you have to give it your full concentration. You have to give it your time. You have to sacrifice something to achieve this. It's not something that should be left by the way and yeah, yeah, we'll pick it up if we can. If we don't, we don't. We'll have it if we want it. If we don't, we don't. No. It has to be our focus. It has to be our priority in life. But unfortunately, we don't do this. Alhamdulillah, viewers of Madhi Channel. I believe we have Hafiz Rafaqat on the line, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah, alaikum wa Alhamdulillah, today we have video, mashallah. We can see your video, not just your sign, mashallah. I can see you, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Acha, Hafsab, um, we were talking about the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I keep on getting digressed because. You know, no matter what I say, no matter what I say, and no matter what any of us say, we cannot give them the status, the credit, the respect that they are due. And so, 
every aspect of their life is something that we can talk so much about. So I don't think there'll be anything that you say, Hafiz Saab, is something that I've covered because there is so much that can be said about them. But one thing I did mention was that they are our stars, they are our guidance. And you know, something I'd like you to touch upon is that, you know, how can we achieve this guidance? How can we follow the companions? What should we do to follow the companions? There's a very famous saying that my companions, as you mentioned, are like stars. You guide for follow any one of them and you'll be guided. And Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, because this was said by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then there is no shak in there, there is no doubt in there that if we follow the Sahaba Ikram, Inshallah, Azawajal, will be guided. Now, if you look at, uh, Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, our Sharia today, our Imams, all these great scholars that have come, you know, they never went away from the teachings of the Sahaba Ikram because they were the ones that stayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa You know, if you are a witness for something, and you say that I heard him say this, or I, uh, I, I heard from someone else that he said this. The Sahaba Ikram are the ones, and they used to say, we were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said this. You know, we were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we heard him say this. So no doubt, whatever we get from the Sahaba Ikram, Alhamdulillah, that is direct knowledge from the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam. And Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned the status of the Sahaba Ikram in the Holy Quran as well, that Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah Azza wa Jal. Now can you imagine that Allah is pleased with this Jamaat of the Sahaba Ikram and the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he says that my Sahaba are like stars. So SubhanAllah Azza wa if we follow these Sahaba Ikram, then no doubt, inshallah Azza wa we will be guided. Or whatever, you know, the, the aspect of our life is, inshallah, Azawajal, by reading the life of the Sahaba Ikram, inshallah, Azawajal, will be guided. You know, one Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu, about tawakkul. You know, if we have to do that tawakkul in Allah, Azawajal, the Sahaba Ikram teaches how to do tawakkul. And one Sahabi says, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayka wa sallam, shall I tie the camel and do tawakkul in Allah, Azawajal, or shall I just leave it? So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, tie it first, and then leave it in the tawakkul of Allah Azza wa So here we learn from the Sahaba Ikram that you should, you know, do whatever you can in your power and then do the tawakkul in Allah Azza wa Jal. So that just proves to you that the Sahaba Allah. Ikram in every aspect of their lives, they were so true and so obedient to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And here we learn from the Sahaba Ikram that if you want to have a life of obedience, then you have the life of obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Azza wa himself as well. You know, one thing that came to my mind as well, Hafiza, was that we hear that in Hajjat al on the on the final Hajj that the Prophet of Allah said, it said that in one rawayat, it said that there were 114,000 companions there, and in another one, it said 124,000 companions were there. And also, we hear we also hear that in Jannat al baqi there are approximately 10,000 companions, yeah? The question comes to my mind, Hafiz Saab, and I'm hoping you're going to answer the question, is, is that if there was 10,000 companions there, and there was 114,000 or 124,000 in Hajjat al Wada, where are all the others? SubhanAllah. If you travel to China, you'll find one Ashra Mubashra, one Sahabi there as well. Allah 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 Allah. Allah. Saad bin Abi Waqas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was one of them, thousands of Sahaba Ikram, that left Madina Ipag, left Madina Tul Munawwara, to go and spread out into the world and spread the message of Islam. So oh, today, well, Alhamdulillah, well. where you find the Sahaba Ikram, in the Middle Eastern countries, you know, you're bound to find some Sahaba, Radiallahu ta'ala, anhu's mazar Park in many, all of the countries. But to think of China, you know, and then you'll find Saad bin Abi Waqas, and this was not uh, a Sahabi that people don't know. He was amongst the Ashra Mubashra that was given the glad tidings of paradise. And you will find his Mazare Park as the start bin Abi Waqas anhu in China. So that proves, you know, a lot of people, the listeners will be watching, mashallah, Ashikane Rasul. Whenever they go to Medina Park, when, when you return back, you don't want to return back, you know, your feet are heavy. You see Amir al Sunnat, mashallah, some of the visuals that we see on Madani channel, how Amir al Sunnat, he cries in the love of Medina, he cries in the love, you know, in the separation from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we can't imagine this. Can you imagine Saad bin Abi Waqas? Allah Allah. How he felt that he spent all leaving his life with the Prophet. Allah, Allah. 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 Allah.
leaving the opportunity. You know, people people spend their whole lives wishing that they could see the Prophet of Allah in their dreams. And these fortunate companions, they had the opportunity to stay there. They had the opportunity to live there, to take direct guidance from him every single day. But the priority was to spread the deen of Islam. This is the love the Sahaba Ikram they had for their for that deen, for the sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Look, we've also done hijrat as well. Our parents, they left our own homeland and we came here. But you know, as they say, a lot of people have made it and a lot of people have broken. A lot of people, those who are broken, making it doesn't mean that you've come here, you've earned a lot of money. Okay, we're living a very comfortable life and we should thank Allah for that. And we should thank our parents for giving us this, you know, a very easy life. And again, what have we done for our deen today? You know, we've left our homeland. Look at the Sahaba Ikram. You know, they left their homeland. You know, subhanAllah. So then when you look at the lives, today we, we think that, you know, Islam is that I, I stay home, I read my namaz. That's my. No, you, one of your responsibilities will be, how, you know, the, I, did you spread the message of Islam or not? The Sahaba Ikram, in the eyes of the Sahaba Ikram, Money well spent is money that is spent on the deen, not on the dunya. We are spending a lot of money in our own home. Well, I'm including myself as well. We're spending money in our own homes, building kotiya back home. And then we say, Janaab, mein kamyab hoi maza hai gaya, zindagi soni guzari hai. What have you done for the deen? Deen ke liye kya kiya, you know? And if you haven't done anything for the deen, ask yourself, did you really spend a good life? You know, I was, you know, thinking, I was thinking as, as you were talking, I think I mentioned it earlier on, Hafsab, that you know, the Sahaba Karam, when they left their homes, they left the not knowing where they were going, not knowing when they were coming back. And, you know, whenever they left the home, it wasn't for like for three days or seven days or 12 days. And yet they left and they went there for months and years and did hijrat and spread the deen of Islam. And yet today, and when they went, they didn't know what they were going to face. And ultimately, they were probably facing swords. They were probably facing people that were going to criticize them, people that were going to give them problems, not knowing where they were going to sleep, drink, eat or anything. And yet today, Hafizah, we find it hard to travel for three days. Why is this? You know, the thing is, I spoke to one uh, Islamic brother, and I'm not even going to say which profession he's in as well. And, you know, I used to say to him so many times, Yara, come on, three days, Madani Kafila. You know, basically, it's just a weekend, isn't it? 72 hours, Muri or something, no problem. Or I, I would love to, but who's going to feed my family? Now, uh, the, the funny thing is, you know, I said to him, I goes, look, brother, you've been in, did you get any grants from the government? He goes, so for three months, you're sat at home. Did you apply for the relief work that Dawud Islami was doing? Did you deliver some food? He goes, no. I was so Allah Ta'ala fed you for three months in your home yes. without doing any work. For yes. three days, you could not travel on the Madani Kafila. Look at you. And now he says, now I realize how important it is. But sometimes, as they say, you know, he's gone back to work again. Azad it's gone back to work again. Like in the thing is, this is the this is how weak our iman is. Yes. No one is saying, you know, maybe we was maybe watching and saying, yeah, but you have to work. Who says don't work? You know, I work, you work as well. Alhamdulillah. You know, we work all day, all night. You know, you know, on the day of judgment, when Allah Taala will ask you, how did you spend your life? Well, are we going to say, Alhamdulillah? We will say that, Inshallah, so that Ya Allah, I spend my life, my in your way. Now we all make dua that Allah Taala accepts this as well. And I'm not saying this in in a, in a way that you know we do a lot of work, and those people who are listening, they don't do anything. Alhamdulillah, you know, if if I say to myself, and we all look at ourselves, Halabi, we came from a background, you know, where you know we didn't grow up in this environment. Sadly, I wish we did. I wish I came into the mahal before. And I could have done a lot of the work of the deen. But as they say, better late than never. So I'm asking the viewers as well that please, if you are watching this, yeah, this is the time that you need to work for your deen. Look at, you know, as they say, sadqai jariya. When you leave this world, you're going to leave this sadqai jariya. Can you imagine, Khalibi, the other day, I was, uh, I was meeting an Islamic brother. And he says, uh, Hafsab, you see this beard and you see the Imam Sharif. I listened to a Muballik's bayan. That Muballigh, I'm talking to him now. He goes, I'm li I listen to a Muballigh's bayan, and Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, I changed my life. This is the Sadqai Jariya. How many of us can put our hand on the heart and say, yes, when I leave, I will have Sadqai Jariya with me? Allahu Akbar. Uh, food for thought, the Hafsab Jazakallah for your time. May Allah Azawajal reward you. I believe that you uh, have just come home from your class now. You're learning Arabic, mashallah, and you've not had your breakfast now, so I'll let you go and have your breakfast, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
صلی اللہ علیہ حبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ماشاءاللہ views of the channel that was half as fuck that gave us uh, some uh, reminders some other pearls with regards to the companions and without doubt like we said and we'll continue to say we cannot give justice to the companions of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the lies the sacrifices they made and all the things that they made uh, but you know we can try and hopefully we can try and learn something from their lives we've got a small package that we want to go to now regarding funding uh, for the works of dawsam let's listen to the package and then inshallah azza wa jalla will come towards the end of the program sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there are many ways to earn the pleasure of allah tabarak wa ta'ala and reward from his court let me share with you an idea where you can earn huge amounts of reward yes all you have to do is to support what you are watching right now Yes, Madani channel. Imagine your donation will be used to raise the name of Allah Tabarak wa Taala. In order to mention the praise of Mustafa sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam, to mention the hamd of Allah Tabarak wa Taala, and to say the naat of Mustafa, to explain the tafsir of Quran and shara of Hadith, to distribute the knowledge and wisdom to the world. You can imagine a great cause. and its reward waiting for you in the court of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala you can set up a standing order on to these details and support your beloved madani channel sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam viewers of the channel you watching rise and shine there's a small promo there for just some of the works of dawus lami and again we just like to make a quick announcement for you viewers of the channel that if you've not already paid your zakat cuz not everybody pays the zakat during the month of ramadan And if you've not paid your zakat or you have any sadqa to spend in the way of Allah Azza wa Jalla, then remember your Dawah Islami. And so much, I can again talk so much about the works of Dawah Islami. But currently at the moment, you know, we've got Madri Channel in front of you. And inshallah, Azza wa Jalla, we want to encourage our viewers to set up uh, standing orders and direct debit so that we get the monthlies in to cover the costs of here in the UK. Such a huge expenditure of just this one department here in the UK. and if we start looking around the world and the expenditure goes up as well similarly viewers on the channel hafiz rabak had mentioned sadqa jariya this is something that you wish to make you wish to make a masjid in uh, for your sadqa jari you wish to dig a well for the people that are and at the moment we're doing a lot for the people that are in the deserts of thar in that place as well so wherever you are if you wish to donate in any of these causes then we will inshallah make sure that we try and fulfill the donors requirements if in the event that you donate to us and we find out that it's not feasible for us to expedite that or to spend it in that way we will contact you and we'll return the funds back to you as well because it becomes our zimmedari and just to let you know that how serious uh, the dawsami takes the donations we were talking about the other day about a, a certain area in the world that could do with obviously some uh, relief work there and we were getting a beautiful madri pearl about it that it is not wajib upon us to raise money for the or to go there but once we raise money once we have money in our hands then it becomes wajib upon it becomes our responsibility to make sure that the funds are used in the correct way if you're on the channel you've been watching Rise and Shine and today we've been talking about the companions and i just want to finish with the saying of Sheikh Al Hadis Alama Mufti Abdul Mustafa Azmi rahmatullah taala he states that all of the islamic scholars and great thinkers of the ummah have the consensus upon the fact that the blessed companions are the highest ranked awliya even if all of the awliya until the day of judgment attain their highest ranks in sainthood still they cannot reach the excellences of wali of any sahabi at all allah azza wa jalla bless the ardent devotees of his beloved habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam with such an exalted exalted rank of wali and such great saintly miracles that they are not even possible to think for any other wali this is the great status of the companions views of the channel nowadays you know again you look at the past of how the pious predecessors how they acquired knowledge they traveled hundreds of miles thousands of miles to hear one hadith views of the channel for us to acquire the knowledge is so easy now you can get it on your pc tablets download the books download the booklets and read them on our website www.dawatislami.net there are booklets there there are pamphlets there there are bayans that have been made of mubalik said dawus lami regarding the companions of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and insha allah azza wa jalla on our rise and shine program insha allah one day a week every one day a week insha allah azza wa jalla we'll talk about a blessed personality be a sahabi or be it one of our pious uh, pious predecessors and the reason again to talk about this is so that we become aware of our rich history and we come to respect them and try and follow them viewers of the channel you've been watching arise and shine and i've gone over the time once again keep watching madani channel 
Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and shine. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise.